Welcome back pilots to Squadrons Update. It's launch week and in only a couple more days, Squadrons will be officially released for everyone. Last week we learned quite a bit of how ranks and general progression will work in the game, and while there wasn't a new pilot briefing this week, we've still been able to learn quite a bit more about Squadrons in regards to how matchmaking will be influenced in fleet battles, whether there will be clan support or not, kinda bad news there, and even how to play the game early by one day too. As always, we'll be covering all of this and more in today's video. And before we get into any of that, but a quick reminder, as if you do like these type of videos, then do remember to give it a like to show your support for not only this update series, but also the content within it. With that out of the way, let's get into it. With Squadrons releasing this week, it's no surprise that we're still learning more and more pieces of brand new information about it. Especially a lot of stuff that normally wouldn't find its place anywhere near a pilot briefing. With that said, some of this information may be minor to some, while to others it could just be the opposite and pretty important. We're gonna first start off with some clarification regarding matchmaking in the game, as quite a few people still had some valid questions on how exactly it worked for fleet battles and your rank. Community manager Jay Ingram was rather quick to respond and clarify matchmaking here, saying that your fleet battle's rank does not influence the matchmaking itself. Instead, it's done through an invisible behind-the-scenes skill rank and is likely defined by several different factors plus your connection. So this certainly may disappoint some folks who weren't really expecting squadrons to have two separate rank systems. But it's not really all that bad, as seeing Motive have one rank for skill and another purely for operations makes it seem that their invisible skill ranking system is to ensure that people have challenging games at the end of the day. But at the same time, they don't tie the operations ranking to matchmaking at all. Instead, Operations Rank will only just be there to show how much people have played in the current Operations season, and not really how skilled they are. Because remember, being high leveled and being skilled are completely different things, both in general and in this game too. Like for example, on Battlefront 2, having a max level character doesn't really mean you're skilled, it just means you've played a lot. And let me tell you, I've lost count by the times I've seen max leveled heroes get absolutely smacked by a much more lower leveled hero. Especially during the summer when all the newbies joined up for free on the PS4. Along with that, Jay was also busy in throwing out several tidbits of brand new information this past weekend that I figured would be of interest for everyone to learn about. Like for starters, he made sure to point out that if you're a Galactic Ace rank, then you'll still very much be able to play with a friend who is a much lower rank than you are. This will totally be fine because matchmaking will match players with the average of your combined ranks. Also, the very first operation in the game will begin immediately on the day of release, which is this Friday. So unlike some other games where the first event doesn't exactly start on launch day, that for sure won't be the case here with Squadrons, so you'll be able to rank up from day one. Another cool tidbit to learn about is that apparently every element in the game was built from the ground up, except for the AI, which was based off from Battlefront 2. Jay also mentions that any models of people or aliens that we saw from the trailers, which were basically copy and pasted from Battlefront 2, were just a placeholder. He affirms that's all been changed for the final release version, which is nice to know as it's common knowledge now that Squadrons does in fact run off the same engine that Battlefront 2 did. But at least it's not reliant on reusing assets from a different game and thus will make Squadrons feel much more fresh visually. That said, there are some negatives to this too, like for example the popular blue Twi'lek skin from Battlefront 2 which will not be selectable as a pilot skin, despite of course showing up in the trailer. Instead, according to Jay, you'll only get the option of using a pink Twi'lek. Along with this, we also won't be able to customize our alien pilots with different colors, so that's a bit of a bummer if that's something you were planning to do. And lastly, Jay also confirmed that Squadrons will unfortunately not have any clan support in the game. 
Which, uh, I'm sorry, but that's literally the dumbest decision Motive have taken here. Especially since, you know, this is a game that focuses all about Starfighter clans, aka squadrons. So to not have any clan support in squadrons, along with the fact the game also won't support private servers, really goes to show the disappointing disconnect that developers have here with their audience, and 2020 gaming in general, so yeah, that's really disappointing to hear. Yeah, um, but to move on, Squadron's creative director Ian Frazier also went to Twitter recently to answer a question that many people, especially those which might feel overwhelmed with starfighting and space simulators in general are curious about, but how exactly will the difficulty be handled in the single player campaign and the AI starfighters in general? Well, according to Ian, apparently there shouldn't be an issue here at all as the story mode difficulty will make the game more accessible by making you more durable, making enemies less durable and less evasive, giving you substantial aim assist, making ship handling a bit easier, and getting auto resupplies from your support ship too. That said, for players wanting more of a challenge in the campaign, there should also be a higher difficulty option for them too. Moving on again, but the achievement slash trophy list for squadrons has also recently been released. In total, there are 48 achievements, 8 of which are hidden as they relate to the story mode campaign. Some of them are kinda funny, like the Stun Him Disabled achievement, which only unlocks if you take out the same player 5 times in one match. But for the most part, yeah, they're your run of the mill achievements, and yes, expect quite a lot of them to be grindy. But of course, that wasn't the only thing that went up this week, as the Squadron Steam trading cards also went up as well. And for anyone who doesn't know what Steam cards are, they're basically what levels up your Steam profile. You also get backgrounds for your profile, Steam emotes for chat with friends, and profile badges to spice up your profile. And in addition to that, you can also sell these Steam cards in the Steam Marketplace for real money too, but not too much, it depends on rarity and all, but yeah. And since we're on the topic of Steam, the Italian EA Community Manager Leon SK has stated that only the Epic Store version of Squadrons will actually require Origin, because the Steam version will only require an account linking with your Origin account. But afterwards, Squadrons should work without Origin. Which, if you previously bought an EA game off of Steam, then you know how annoying Origin also having to open up just to play the game could be. So this is absolutely great news for Steam users. Just kind of weird that this wasn't made as an official announcement in the English language since it's pretty big news, but hey, you're hearing about it from here now. And last but not least, EA Star Wars Community Manager Andrew Johnson made a pretty cool announcement this week over on Twitter, giving everyone a heads up that people who pre-ordered on Steam and Epic can play Squadrons at global-based Midnight UTC instead of the region-based Midnight, which means getting to play 1-8 to eight hours earlier than originally expected. So if you're in North or South America, you're actually gonna have access on Thursday night. But at the same time, you're gonna have to sacrifice some sleep too if you do want to play early. And whether that's truly worth it, well, that's going to be for you to decide. But until the next time, this will do it for your Squadrons update. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to not only support it, but also keep up with Star Wars news, gaming, and canon lore released every week. And consider following me on Twitter and Facebook to never miss out on the latest Star Wars content. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you!